Stan Radarowitz. Radarowitz. There, there are people on the list that will know him. If yeah. you're an RPMer, you know Stan. Stan, the first time we went to Naperville, way back when, Stan was selling some resin parts. And he had the Pullman proprietary ends that were used by the Great Western on their 40 and 50 foot boxcars. And <laughs> I bought some from him. <clears throat> I brought the cars back the next year. And Stan was so shocked that somebody actually built something with his parts <laughs> that we were best friends from then on. <laughs> but anyway, these are a couple of presentations that I put together for Stan. Uh, he was uh, uh, technically challenged, I'll say. And uh, he sent me the photos and I put them together. Uh, the first one we'll look at, I gotta share my screen, is <clears throat> this one here that I know nothing about. Um, okay, this is, uh, I was just looking through and I saw these and I thought, crap, we might as well take a look at these things. Um, this one's on ice bunker reefers. Um, I'll let you guys read this stuff because I haven't read through it since I typed it 20, 15, 20 years ago. Um, but it looks like it says what he means by a modern is those that have fans that uh, help with the cooling inside the, the car. Uh, We've got a heater in this photo, and plus showing uh, looks like a wheel with a that runs off the train wheel, um, and a and a belt going to what looks like to be a whole pile of uh, squirrel cage fans across the bottom of the ice bunker. Um, well, here we have an alternator. They didn't even use. You think train people would be uh, behind the times and use DC, but no. We have an alternator here that runs off the wheel and uh, operates electric fans inside the uh, the compartment. I think this would be the wall between the bunker and the package compartment. Here's another photo showing the fans and another way of, uh, of uh, hooking up the alternator. I could see that belt lasting a long time with the crap <laughs> the train. <laughs> <laughs> I get knocked off in a minute or two. <laughs> uh, and, you know, this will be recorded so you can come back and read this stuff anytime you want. Uh, but this is one of the heaters that they would put in the cars in the wintertime. And that was kind of a dangerous job because the heaters would suck all the oxygen out of the car. So when you, they went to remove the heaters, they'd open the hatches on the top and then hook onto them with, with a pipe or a or a rod with a hook, and then lift them out of the car. They wouldn't go down in the car. Uh, nowadays, they would frown on that tremendously. They may have in these days, I don't know. Uh, he's talking about the consortium cars here. Uh, the consortium was uh, uh, these three railroads, the, the fruit growers uh, and uh, the Burlington were the major players. Uh, and they kept these wooden cars for years and years. Uh, Intermountain makes a model of one of these cars. I don't know if it's this particular one or not. Um, uh, but I've got one. It's a really nice car. But I know that people back when they came out with it, being, you have these people that uh, will call them the consortium Nazis. And uh, they nitpick everything that has to do with uh, mm. uh, th this this group of uh, railroads that, that formed this uh, company. This is still a wooden car, but this one has steel ends, I see. Uh, this is 68. You know, it looks freshly painted. It's got plywood sides by now, it says. Here's another wooden one. Uh, this one was yeah, rebuilt, repaid. The reway date is uh, 7 to 64. This one, I can't read the reway from this angle. This one here is uh, 
Taken in 69, you can see it's a completely wooden car still roaming around. Looks like somebody threw some of the ice out that was inside the car. Maybe they had what they call top icing, where they actually blow chunk <laughs> ice, something like a snow cone, in on top of the vegetables inside the car. Another all wooden car. This one's got a reway of 64. So it would be good till 67 or so before they would restencil it. A steel one. We're getting fancy now. But look at some of them even made it into the BN in uh, right. all wood construction. Yeah, I remember seeing some of those. Uh -huh. I remember now seeing some of those in 1972, at least. Yeah, this one says double deck, so there must be grit, uh, what they call racks inside that they can stack two layers of material on. Another nicely painted one, and this one still has uh, truss rods under it. And then there's another one in front of it that's a little more humble looking. Wow. Uh, this one has, I never paid attention. One thing I want to point out on this one here that I'm, I'm looking at the brake wheel is that uh, something the railroads did and I do with my models is you'll notice the, a lot of these cars have silver roofs, but the ends of them are painted a box car red. And notice how the running board up there was unpainted, galvanized, uh, and they oversprayed the end of it with the brown paint. <laughs> and you see that a lot if we go through here and you notice that. Um, so when I build models, if the end is a different color than the roof, I'll paint the end of the running board to match the ends. And this one, you can see a little bit. It's, more, it's not done neatly, it's more of an overspray. But you can see the, the fan housing uh, above that back truck on an all wooden car. And it has a newer style brake, brake uh, handbrake on it too. Now we're getting into uh, uh, plug door reefers. And uh, Stan says they appear to be the same as a PFE reefer. I stay away from, I don't, and this one says, poor scans from books, no crap. Yeah, they're, <laughs> it's not your eyes, folks. <laughs> Do not try to adjust your screen. <laughs> well, just, oh, here's another one. But these were meat reefers uh, that he was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, the top one must be a meat reefer, too. I don't know. National... Uh, car company. I'm not familiar with with reefers much, so I don't know these companies that well. This one we can tell. Uh, this is a nice picture, probably from uh, Bob's photos by the looks of it. Uh, must be in for repair. You notice they're replacing the waste in the in the journal boxes, and it just got re-stenciled for uh, uh, for repacking. If you notice there, that nice black with uh, with the white lettering in it, it says repacked uh, CNJ possibly in 1954. How about that? And then here's the car we looked at last week. Oh, yeah. And he mentioned down here, it's a lot of effort for a, a car with hardly any capacity. <laughs> but this one has the... Uh, Part of the reason that Stan put all this stuff together is, is he really liked these reefers, and he was making models of all these things to sell. And I'll talk about that maybe if I think there's some pictures of some real reefers and some models. There they are. Okay, so these are, are reefers that Stan would have, kits that he would have sold. He had a friend that would, uh, had a laser cutter that would cut plastic. And he would take these Intermountain reefers and cut the sides off of them. And it was done, you know, surgically. And then he would make a master 
for a new side and have that cast in resin. So what we have here is an intermountain car with a new resin side on it uh, to make it into something else. And I'm just looking at that. Uh, these are newer car, uh, 56, 60, 56 anyway, because they have the diagonal panel reefer roof. Um, you'll notice the difference between the reefer roof and the one on a box car is there where you have the ice hatches at the very end and then the next panel is flat. There's no corrugations in it. Um, I built a car years ago using a boxcar roof and have since learned my lesson. Uh, so now we're going to look at some Burlington cars, looks like, um, with the plug doors and his model. And these uh, Barber S2 trucks would be uh, Branch Line or whoever Atlas sells their stuff now. I think you might be able to get them from Tahoe also, Tahoe Model Works. And this one has a fan. You can see that that kind of uh, ended circle above the, the left truck. That would be for the fans. No, I don't. That's a, for, okay, National must have uh, supplied, or says, says supplied reefers to meat packers. And here's a meat packer right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, Stan, it's too blurry for me to see. I think that. At the, at the left of the car, there's a black dot. That must be the fan he's talking about. Yep. Yep. And uh, here's a couple more of his. Looks like uh, same car. I don't know why if there's two pictures of it here. Because I can, the, the hand, the grab iron is broken in the same spot on both of them. Unless it's the other side of that car. Yeah, because one of them has a has a yep. do not hump or something, some kind of a message on the on the tack board. The look, other one. Look doesn't. at the brake rigging. They're from each side. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. So the, it's amazing how he broke the handrails almost exactly <laughs> the same. <laughs> <laughs> Must have had a. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This would be both sides of the of a different car. Yeah. And more, this one must be in ventilator service. The uh, tops are open. More. Well, I'm glad that uh, Stan can tell the difference between these hoppers or these uh, these reefers because I certainly can't. But he used to sell a pack of these things. Now this is, did it say anything about FHI? I think I remember something about that when I was building, putting this together. And I can't remember who those people are. There'll be plenty of people when this goes out, correct all of my misgivings on here, showing my ignorance. Of course, then again, if you don't ask a question, you can't get an answer. And the, they say there are no dumb questions, but everybody tells me that's certainly a dumb question. <laughs> There's WH. So the WH must be the Great Northern cars. The W is for Western. Okay. Western and, fruit. And yeah. the other one, the other one. Didn't it start with an F that was, or was that a fruit? Uh, yeah, I, I think that was an was. F. It started with an F, which was a fruit grower's car, okay. I think. Okay, and the X is, probably... and I think the X is, must have something to do with Express, does it? Well, the X is because it's a private owner. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, they all would be. You're right. Private owners. 
and they yeah. would be private owners because the rail, the railroads <laughs> railroads didn't want to own these kinds of cars. No, they avoided it. They leased them sometimes. Yeah, to somebody else. Somebody else had yeah. to take them because they weren't as economic to run as boxcars. Okay, we're going to look at some northern. Oh, these are cool. I remember the stand models that Stan made of these because they they added an extra door to make a six foot opening. So the one door was like a closet door. It would it, it would accordion uh, open. Now this one would be owned by the Northern Pacific. Apparently, it's got an NP number yep. on it. Yep. yep, you got it. Yeah, it looks like they own their own. Yeah, yep, those are too. Yeah, you got some nice photos here, freshly painted. And then yeah. here's one of his models. Wow. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty nice. Well, there are probably still these kits laying around. I know that they've popped up in, in the states locally um, in, in recent years that people who bought them and never, ever built them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had quite a few of these with the three doors. Mm -hmm. I don't know who WFB is. Mm -hmm. There's <laughs> one LLN. That's uh, another meat one. LLNX. So, let's go. Yeah, and then the NX, these are meat reefers too. So. Yeah. And that's the end of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is all this stuff? Oh, there's more. Nice. There's all this stuff. PFEs. Uh, PFE stuff. Yes. Yeah, he liked that. Pacific too. Fruit Express, PFE. Yep. Southern Pacific. Yeah, one Union thing Pacific. nice about this photo here, it shows how the 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 two uh, logos for the companies were placed on opposite sides of the car. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. As they did the same here on this car with their logos. Mm. I didn't even know these cars were on here. I got to the went through this earlier today, zipped through it, got to the. That's all, folks. Got the Bugs Bunny and figured that was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of nice models here. That's a wooden car. Steel rebuilt anyway, has steel ends. Of course, all of the the PFE people know what what the class of all these cars are. That's a big deal for them. Like if there are 30, 24, or 40, 24. If I remember right, the 30 and the 40 stands for the tonnage of the car. And what the 24, the R would naturally be reefer. And I don't know what the, the 24 may be that many cars that they had done. You know, there would be a R40, 23 and R40, 25, possibly. But I'm speaking out of my rear here. And this uh, another wooden car. This is all wooden car, wooden ends too. You know, red. I think this car here could be a possibly a model that Red Caboose not did. Uh, it's, I think it's called a, a Bettendorf underframe. It's a built-up underframe. Um, I'm not sure, um, but I think that's the way the Red Caboose cars use that underframe. And another uh, Banger and Aris mm -hmm. Yeah, they can see the underframe under this guy. This is uh, is different than what you would normally. The cross members and cross bearers are different than what you would normally see. It also had open end bolsters. Yeah, yep, they are. I noticed yeah. that before I noticed the what looked yeah. like I beams running across the car underside of the car. 
And this one has a nice weathering job. You have different panels that are slightly different. Here's one of his, looks like one of his kits, how he's right? he about putting it together. Oh my God, you broke his dude. And this would be, a, I'm not sure, that's the built up under frame. Might be. The side and the roof. This one, this car has a Viking roof, which is kind of unusual for reefers. Two ends. And this is not the same car. This one has a different, you'll notice this roof has a, a roof a lot like, what do they call it? Just that shops, the, the, the um, New York Central have these uh, two corrugations per panel. That's what looks like the roof he used on this car. Oh, yeah. This is a diagonal panel roof here. And then these are rectangular panel roofs. This would be uh, the cars that were, uh, oh, I'm not sure what this car is. It's in the number series that I know, but the car in that number series don't look like this. Hmm. Wow, he put some fancy doors on that puppy. Yep, no now more. these doors, yeah, this car looks a lot like this, those Swift cars that they made. I think that what he did is he made, you can see there's, uh, that he cut the original door out of this car and then placed a resin piece in its place with the door and uh, the area above the door. Because he did that with his uh, meat reefers too. Because those, those four hinges are very unique. Yeah. Yeah, the double latches. Yep, double latches and the four hinges rather than six. Yeah, this guy's got uh, double latches on each side. So these are various reefers that he would have marketed for sale. He would have sold kits for all of these guys. There's one that he had on display. He did uh, several kits for the Northwestern refrigerator line also, I know. There's another one there. Because I remember building the, the steel one. I remember building one of these. And then back to that Pensy conglomerate. This one here, they've even gone so far as to look like mm -hmm. put plywood or metal sides on. Wow. Or is it, it might not be, it might be the siding is just fresh. No, it actually does look like it's not wood anymore. Yeah. That's even a bigger waste of money. That's steel. I think we're back to now stuff that was in there from the beginning. Yeah, we'll dump this guy and we'll find the other one. Uh oh, what have I done? I want to share my screen. You'll get back to it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. There we go. And we'll do this one. Uh oh. Yeah. I got to get to the. I can't get to my uh, down. Oh, there it is. Kids. Okay. This one's on panel side hoppers. This one I remember a little bit better. And here's the credits. And then he talks about the reasons why they rebuilt these things.
So it looks like they increased the capacity from 1,800 cubic feet to 1933. Uh, here you see uh, a, a three bay CNO car, uh, the second car back there. Here's a better shot of that. New York Central had three. <laughs> they did three cars, and looks like that's all they decided. Hmm. Well, he talks about 546 other cars. Here's a three bay that they rebuilt. This is the 546 three bays they rebuilt. Pennsylvania had, I think, one car. Yes, this is it. <laughs> Something that was standard in Pennsylvania didn't want anything to do with. <laughs> Another photo of that car. And then uh, he's going to talk about the Northwestern ones. I know a little bit later there's photos of... Uh, uh, these things were originally bought to haul uh, company coal in. I know that. He used to like to find these kind of older kits that he thought were better than the, uh, representing these models than some maybe some newer design. And he would always ask me, you go to swap me, look for a hobby line, four bay hopper for me. I said, yeah, right. <laughs> find one of those. <laughs> but here they are. This is going to talk about uh, redoing the, uh, the Northwestern cars, rebuilding them with the panel sides. <laughs> and here they are, all the sides cut out. Yeah, I like Surprising they don't that. fall over. And then here's a guy, 1947, they did 500 of these things. I know they make a brass model, and there are, I don't, is it uh, Ricks and maybe Tichy that make these panels? So you could actually probably easily do one of these cars if you chose to. And what's kind of interesting is you'll notice there, behind the, the grab irons. Uh, they made a recess, so you got a place to put your hands and, and your feet. And here's that Hobby Line model again that he's added the uh, uh, Pike Stuff panels to. Hmm. And here's one going to be overhauled. They changed, they made these into sand cars. There, uh, there was one here in town for years. I'm sure most of their terminals had one of these. Uh, this one here is not made for sand service yet, but you can see it's labeled for, uh, here's one of the sand cars. And a different one with white stenciling. They can never keep that straight. And I thought was interesting is they must have taken these Viking roofs off of box cars and put them on these hoppers. Yeah. And then they sold off a bunch. Here's 450 went to the KD before they rebuilt them with into sand cars. And 50 went to the Florida East Coast. And now we're back to original one. It looks like the DNH had a thousand of these and they even had an extended panel on the end of the car, which be a trick. Missouri Pacific. They had 700, no, 423. So I think Tichi makes one of these cars. Um, and so does um, Accurail. I believe they make a model with these panels on the side. Um, maybe they make them in these road names. I'm not sure. Did Bowser do one? Um, I couldn't tell you. Here's one, and they got uh, made a covered hopper out of it. They changed the hoppers on the bottom, too. They got slide gates in them. And now we'll look at some Wabash ones. This is 
his real passion was for the Wabash cars. They had a lot of these things, obviously. And this was the car that they chose to rebuild. And this. He used to sell a kit for this car, too. I've got one. I, Bob's got one. Um, he had the sides laser cut out. So when you put the panels on, the inside would be open to the panel instead of just being flush across the inside of the car. <clears throat> I don't, There might be a picture of one in here. Right now, we're just looking at all the different series the Wabash like these things and of course the Ann Arbor now you can see yeah. what happens here <laughs> is that uh yeah. in the winter time the cold doesn't want to come out it's frozen in there. <laughs> where, where I work we take huge torches and put them underneath the hoppers and literally burn the car up and then beat the shit out of the sides with sledgehammers of course we had a car <laughs> set on the top and and rattle the car to no end. They yeah. need to model uh, this it. guy here. You can see they've got a uh, a dreadnought piece of dreadnought end on the yeah. on the end of the car for extra stiffening. This one doesn't. This is uh, uh, lifelike made this one here the the war emergency car with the wood sides. Yeah. This one has been, I think, uh, uh, Proto did this car also mm -hmm. with uh, the steel replacement sides. And of course, Ann Arbor had some wood ones. Here's one that's uh, looks like Ben Weaven loaded it. Speed up. Yeah, now we're getting to where uh, the, evidently the public must be aging and they, they need glasses, so we're going to put the name on larger. <laughs> <laughs> and who cares about a depressed center flat car? We're going to look at the hopper in the background. <laughs> and this one here. Ooh. <laughs> wow. You know, there's a story. Um, on the great Chicago Great Western over at my Ostrander, Minnesota, they would load iron ore into two and three bay hoppers. Oh. And they were constantly overloading them because oh. they had no sale. And when the cars would get down the O-line, they would weigh them. And then if they had too much in, they'd scoop some out. So they'd have this huge pile of iron ore there that they oh. would have to put back into cars. And oh. this guy here obviously was overloaded. And the, the center still gave out. Oh. Like a sway back horse. Yeah, yeah, this guy here went down to Mexico. And then there's a bunch of slides in here uh, on this Anderson's. And I'm not sure he does. He talk is a grain elevator in Maumee, Ohio. They had 30 cars. And there's Stan right there looking at one, Stan. Drool, ah. drool. And, you know, you've got to take pictures of everything this talks about. Uh, I'm not sure. Brake rigging. <laughs> All rods under it. And the length of them. Yeah, yeah that's what the dimensions were. Okay. Yeah, you can see the the indentation there for to help employees. Trucks. If you recognize Mark Vaughn's name, he used to, uh, he was a really good friend of Stan's and he used to make all the decals for Stan. Well, he didn't make them. He did the artwork and uh, uh, well, the guy in Chicago that's retired now, he made the decals. Uh, and they're really good. Pardon? Manlick? No, um, oh crap. 
He did all the decals for Westerfield and, and Sunshine. Real graphic. Uh, that's it. Yep. Somewhere I, saw, somewhere I saw they put the panel really in the wrong way. And they like they had a short one and a long one switched. That's on this car? Yeah. This kind of car. They had a short yeah. you know, like the, the angle one where the N and the D is, and then the N and the D one was over. And it looked so strange. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see they used a, a two a channel look like uh, some kind of angle iron that they welded together, make a T out of. Ah, now we're going to model them with, looks like Jim Singer actually built a model. Um, or he took the photographs anyway. This is the B end of the car. And excuse me, and and he looks like he's you obviously using an Athern car here. And I tried doing the same thing, drilling out all uh, and replacing the grab irons. And I don't know what plastic Athern uses, but it's not real friendly for doing this with. My hat's off to anybody that can do a nice job like this. And then this would be the B end of the car where the brake components are located. And he's actually adding some wiring in there or some plumbing. Uh, the underbody. These must be cast parts here. And then I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks like he's notched. I don't know if the if the that underframe piece actually comes. Uh, the center still comes with a notch in it or not? I don't, I guess I don't pay much attention. But he's, uh, he's always, he's added all the piping that you're never going to see. Yeah. They've even added uh, the supports on the inside. Wow. And this one here, he's going to do uh, the corrugated end on the dreadnought end and you can, it must be it's from a gondola i imagine knowing jim singer he was associated with uh accurail uh he knows those people so these are probably accurail gondola ends that he's cut and put in there i'll give the benefit of the doubt to jim singer but i'm uh, stan could have built these two i'm not sure which one did it some more dents on the sides and then because of the corrosive nature of coal you can see where it eats right through these cars and they're they're patched not really a, a clean service car that's for sure and here he's showing this is one of his cars where he has had the sides cut out and then he has the panels uh, to, to cover up the holes. So the car had the inside of the car matches the outside of the car. And then the gates. Clark, could you go Looks back? Like he's oh, added back oh, here. Good. No, that's fine. No, the, the next one is fine. This one. No, the next one. Yeah. This one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, lead shot. Okay. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. And they yeah. actually use some of that crappy forest wire that comes in F and C kits, that green wire they use for the oh, train line. God, yeah, I hate that stuff. <laughs> that's bad. Yeah. Floral wire. Floral wire. I keep I keep it for, I keep a few pieces because it does have a use now and then, but certainly not for what they intended for. And here's the car all painted. 
color painted. Nicely done. And labeled for Ann Arbor. And Wabash. And Big Wabash. <laughs> I think Jason has a bunch of these with a large Wabash like that on them that he got from, uh, uh, I don't know where, but here's one with the large model with the large Wabash too. This one's been lifted up somewhat. And that's that, maybe. That's oh, all. There, that's the end. Well, this is what I put in there. Uh, uh, this one has a, uh, uh, Frisco panel side in there. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Let me get rid of this. Clark, are you big into um, reefers? What's that? Are you big into reefers, wood reefers? No, I don't. I have. I have reefers because I have canneries. Otherwise, I wouldn't have any. Oh, okay. My so last layout, I had reefers because I had a packing house. The the there's a book called The Great Yellow Fleet. Yeah. yeah. That I have, and it's a tome. It's just it's got so much information in it. You can't quite follow all of it. But it's. No, it's I think they've book. done a second edition. Oh, as, good. as uh, Tony Thompson and his cohorts gathered more information, they put out a second edition, I think, unless it's just a second, because Tony runs a publishing company, so it may be just uh, a second publisher. Yeah. I'm not sure. Are you talking but, a PFE book? Pardon? Yeah. Are you talking a PFE book, Clerk? Yeah, yeah. The Great did a second, yeah, they did a second one. He he, uh, they added to the first one, and there was a second edition that was an expanded uh, one of the PFE reefer book. Yeah, I've got Gene Green's reefer book, and I think I've got another book with photos of reefers in it. But other than that, I don't I don't pay much atten attention to them. There's too much too much information there. You can only <laughs> My little head can only handle so much. As you can see, looking through all those consortium cars, yeah. all kinds of variations. Well, there was, also, there was also a book done on billboard reefers, too. Hmm. Beer cars. <laughs> Beer cars, yeah. yes. The beers. I'm sorry. All right. Well, thank you, Clark. I appreciate you bringing those out of the uh, out of your uh, collection for us. Very interesting. These are just some new cars. Remember, I had these uh, a number of time ago, so I don't have any comments on them. But we go through. If you see anything that you have interest, why uh, you can tell me. <clears throat> Nice transformer. There's no weird. Yeah. Oh, locomotive frame. Yeah. What kind of car was that? That was that a, one. Looks like Canadian Pacific, but the, it's got a locomotive frame on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah evidently. Thank they you. Broke one and That's the what replacement. It is. Sure, there's the fuel tank. Okay, yeah, fuel tank and all that and anti climber on here. Yeah, it's probably a, a replacement for one that was damaged. Yeah. They come through Valpo fairly often going up to London, Ontario. Hmm. Well, hmm. That's what you use that green F and C wire for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would typically just handling it normally. You can make train lines out of it too. 
Yeah, well, how, what's the diameter of that? Isn't it around twenty thousandths or a little seven, under? That? Se, no, it's the pretty, seventeen thousand. I've got it as small as seventeen thousandths in a package ranging to twenty thousandths, all in the same package. Oh wow, <laughs> not too consistent. <laughs> They're not uniform at all. And if you use uh -huh. a micrometer, if you use a micrometer on it, you'll crush it. It's not necessary for it to be uniform on it if they're using it to wrap up flower arrangements. <laughs> Correct. Uh, right. To make flower arrangements with. <laughs> they just need some twisty wire. I, I made some rebar loads out of those things. <laughs> so, hey, yep. Back up one, would you? Yeah, it's an interesting repatch. Ron, <laughs> back up one, would you? Yeah. That's kind of cool. That's an older car. Yeah, eight foot nice, door. Yeah. Nice big door. Yeah, ten or twelve. Yeah, yeah, it might be at least. That's like a ten. It's ten? Like ten anyway. Yeah, probably paper on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Set up for auto. Truck here, I know. TOFC. Well, what is that stuff? <laughs> well weathered. I wonder how many bags were on that car to start with. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably right. <laughs> you know, these are taken in the 90s. It's hard to believe that's almost 30 years old. Yeah. Yeah. And even I remember roof walks. <laughs> ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's interesting. Well, I'd love to see a model like that. That would be a little difficult to make that side. Well, I don't yeah. know. With CNC machining, that could be done very simply. But would anybody buy it? Even the wrinkles? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the wrinkles can easily be done. But huh. I talked to a couple of manufacturers at Train Fest one time, and they said, oh, we've talked about it for hours. And he doesn't think anybody would buy it. I think they would. I think RMC just had an article on it, one of their last issues. They did. They did. CP really had a lot of red cars. Yep. A lot of cars with ripples in the sides. Mm -hmm. No graffiti. Yeah, where's the graffiti? Ah. It must, well, it oh. must have been early 90s. <laughs> That's Santa before, Fe. Graffiti, before graffiti. Nobody had gone to art school yet. Never seen one like that. Never. Yeah, that's quite a cage. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that. that was unique. <laughs> Magic. Oh, I know. These are only 25 long. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you did it. You finished. I'm done. <laughs> but All right. the, very good. The very waffle good. cars were done in resin by Pierre Oliver. Uh, all right well thanks everybody for coming tonight thanks clark okay. for your presentations thanks ron and mm -hmm. uh we'll get together again next week if you're interested in presenting like i said just let me or ron know and uh have a great thursday all right see you guys have a good night everybody